Dakota's Nissan R34 GTR. Um, bit of a dream car for most people, this thing is. It's an absolute banger of a car, whether it's modified or not. Um, you know, like, just check it out. It's an absolute beast. Uh, it's no secret, me and this car have a love-hate relationship. I love it when it's good, I hate it when it's bad. Um, but when it's bad, it's because we're trying to work things out. So um, something like this, so heavily modified, you're trying to make a drive on the street. <sighs> you're essentially building a drag car to drive on the street. It, it's a balancing act of getting things right. Um, I've spent a fair bit of time trying to get the flat shift working. This car runs a PPG gearbox uh, with a load cell on the top of the gearbox and it's a sequential. And you know, finding that right ingredients to making the car shift gears cleanly, neatly, efficiently, without trying to tear the crank out of it. Um, yeah, so I, I've finally got all that dialed in. I'll do a video, I'll, I'll show the video in this, in this video um, of it you know, banging through the gears on the dyno, which is pretty cool. Um, but I thought I'd just give this car a bit of a showcase because I've, I've done a couple of little videos, but nothing, over, you know, haven't really gone through it all. So um, it's, Heart is pretty much a, it's an R, it's an R, it's a 2.8 litre um, RB. So this engine is built by Will over at JHH Racing in New South Wales. Uh, Will's a good friend of ours um, and he's done an absolute banger job. Um, this runs one of his cast iron blocks with sleeves. Um, and look, it works really well. It's on top of a, it's got a G45, um, sorry, G42 turbocharger. Um, all the custom work is all done by us here in house. Jade's uh, done all the aluminium work and the fab on this one. Brown and Miller um, hoses, you can see these. You'll generally spot these hoses on some of the bigger, more expensive builds. Um, the, the hoses aren't cheap, um, but these cars aren't cheap either. So um, when you build something like this, you, you, you always stick to the quality stuff. Um, you know, super flexible and there's so many hoses in this thing. So it's like, I don't know if you can see down there, there's just stuff going everywhere, you know, so. Runs a twin hyper, uh, manifold with twin hyper, no, sorry, hyper tune manifold with twin injectors. So it runs a Decker 2430 um, as a secondary and runs a thousand cc as the primary. Um, the injectors, the, the secondaries are supplied by uh, sticks over at Quick Bits. Um, you can see his logo down in there. Um, and then it's got a catch can on there. I've, I've done a few videos in this catch can. It took us a long time to get this catch can working well on this car. And we've actually got a, a dual stage um, external oil pump on this car. And what we're doing is we're using the second stage to pretty much evacuate the engine block to pull the crankcase pressure out of it and bring it back into the catch can. And then obviously then we've got some drainage and all that sort of stuff going on underneath. Um, pretty crazy what we're doing underneath, but you know, it works, um, it works really well. I'm very happy with it. We actually stuck a GoPro inside the catch can when we were developing it and watch what was going on. And it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. When we, when we saw what was happening in there, it was, wasn't too hard to work out what we had to do. So, but, um, yeah, it's got a clutch, uh, hydraulic, uh, I can't remember what they call these things again. It's been a while since I used it. Um, but that's basically set up there. So. When you dump the clutch, we can control how quick the clutch releases or how slow. So we can introduce a lot of, quite a fair bit of slip on the clutch to get it to hook up off the line. So it's something you'd set up at the drag strip and you can pretty much set it up. So once you dump the clutch, you can literally watch the pedal, you know, rise from the bottom of the floor. It's pretty cool how it works. Um, all controlled by the Haltech ECU. And it, um, yeah, helps you find that balance between getting it off the line and not bogging it down. Cause you've got so much grip in these things. Um, and not a lot of power in the bottom end. So when you drop the clutch, they tend to either just bog and stall um, or just smash the tires, you know, essentially. So you've got to find that right compromise between what you, what you need to get it going and making it fast. Um, you've got a little bit of sniff of the gas on there. Um, that's only for just bringing it up onto boost, but to be honest with you, we don't really need it. So we've pretty much got that turned off and the bottle's out of the car. It's just, it's, it's something there for later down the track. Um, everything's all ceramic coated. It's got the full Haltech catalog in there, R35 coils, um, R5 Nexus and controls, controlling everything, including the four-wheel drive system. Um, that's another thing I've spent a fair bit of time this week, just dialing in the Atessa, just trying to get that to work right. We initially had some issues with the four-wheel drive system when he was turning it. It was, um, it was, the, he had a transfer case in there that was quite tight. And what it was doing is it's, it was making everything bind up when you're turning it. So we had to sort of come up with a strategy that allows the car to drive um, and find that right balance between having the four-wheel drive coming in and having it turn it off. And, you know, it's all controlled by steering angle and all that sort of stuff. So 
Um, pretty cool how that all works and we've learned a lot in setting that up. So it's, you're always learning when you're doing these sort of cars because there's no textbook for what's right or wrong. You just got to go with it and, you know, iron out your little bugs and gremlins as you go. So um, Hypertune uh, radiator, um, I believe Arthur over at Tuner's Edge supplied all that, um, including all the hyper gear stuff. Um, yeah, it's got the hyper gear. Uh, header tank as well on the back there. I'm just trying to think what else that we've done to this. This is so much work. PPG gearbox, um, the rec clutches have also done the clutch on it. Uh, we've had that out a couple of times, just trying to get it dialed in nice and clean. Um, yeah, it's got the healthy dash. It's got everything. It's got all the all the fruits on it. So it's, it's an absolute banger of a car. Power wise, you know, it makes like 900 kilowatts. Um, which is pretty cool, you know, it's a fast car. Luckily, we've got the, the keypad in there, which allows us to do, um, like, th throttle blip, traction control. Uh, we've got all heaps of, you know, heaps of cool features on this car just to try and make it drivable, you know, make it so you can actually use it on the street. Um, you know, technically, it's a drag car, you know, on a street chassis. So, um, as you can imagine, when it comes on, it comes on like an absolute maniac. Like, it just wants to tear you off the road. Um, and GDRs just love to talk to you, so you've got to be hanging onto that steering wheel for all hell. But, um, but yeah, we'll jump in the car and have a bit of a look at the, the gear stick and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, you've got like, that's the Haltech keypad, it's got the small one, and then that's the um, PBG gear knob. So, hopefully, the lighting's a bit better so you can just sort of just see the dash there. Um, but yeah, oh, another thing I probably should probably make note of it's got a, an Alexa um, single in tank fuel pump in this thing with their controller. And, Man, that fuel pump, um, we get these from Dave and, and Stewie over at DSR um, Performance in Melbourne. So they, they've, they've got a good contact with the guys at Alexa over there and they, we work well together. And, you know, that fuel pump, we, we did some development with it the other week um, and ran it through the flow bench. And, you know, you, you go from like 0% duty cycle of like 500 and I can't remember exactly what it was, it was 500 odd litres, you know, per hour. Um, at sort of like 43 psi and then as you go up to around sort of 76 psi at a 90 odd sort of duty cycle you know it's 1250 liters per hour from one pump you know in the tank you know so this doesn't have a surge tank in it that's just pretty much everything's all in the tank you know buried right down deep in the factory position and you know i can say if you're ever thinking about putting a single fuel pump in these alexas are absolute um yeah gorilla for, for what the size of it is if you see how small it is, like it's tiny and the amount of grunt this pump has, it's awesome. But the only trade-off is, is that yes, it is very amp hungry. So you've got to make sure you've got plenty of juice, good alternator, a good battery and good power supplies. Otherwise, you, it won't have much success with it. But um, hopefully I've covered everything. You know, if I missed something, you know, hit us in the comments, ask a few questions, happy to answer it. Um, I know Coda loves to get on here and have a bit of a chat about his car too, as we all do. You know, it's exciting. It's, a, it's, it's his baby. So um, he'll be more than happy to talk to you in the comments. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and yeah, well, once again, yeah, just ask, ask away, you know, ask us what you want, um, and we'll do the best we can to answer the questions. Uh, enjoy the video guys. Th th thanks for watching and yeah, see you next time.